am I? Where do I belong? Home. Where is home? Place, people, land, memories. Is it a feeling or is it pain? Is it the unknown or will I find out more about who I am and where I belong? Searching for the grandmother I never met. I remember when I got told to get the f out of the country and go back home for the very first time, it, it totally shocked me. And I remember being so pissed off. I was like, yes, maybe I will go home as soon as I can figure out where home is because I have no idea where is home. And that's been one of the biggest questions of my life because I'm still figuring it out. It first started when I was 18. By myself, I went to Indonesia, piecing together the clues of my grandmother's origins. The clues eventually took me to this one village in the middle of nowhere. However, I was interrupting a feast, yet they still invited me to join them with such warmth. The village elder, a lady, sat at the head of the table and throughout the whole feast wouldn't take her eyes off me. Worried I had intruded, I, I asked her grandson to see if I had unknowingly offended. It's nothing, just I feel like I recognize this boy's face, she said. Now I felt stupid for even thinking what I was thinking but I took all the oldest pictures I had of my grandmother and I passed it down to her she stared at the pictures looked up at me and stared back down at the pictures the next thing I remember was her hugging me from behind and tears streaming down her face down onto me I knew your grandmother as a child she said she she was my best friend we heard that she left the country on a boat and we never saw her again you must stay you are my grandson I was totally overwhelmed and I for once had a connection to someone I'd never met. This woman couldn't answer my questions about my grandmother's origins back then and my journey failed. But now, years later, I'm setting out again to find my answers. I'm just thinking what my mom would have thought. What was she like? No, she just never thought she was important. But did she ever bring up Indonesia? No, we never, we know, she talked about Indonesia and how good. She always used to say, ah, you know, Indonesia was better, but uh, this is one of the biggest regrets we, I have. I just took it for granted, you know. I'm going to Indonesia to find out more about your mother. Is there any advice? I'm not sure to say I know very little. The only thing is I wish I ask her and found out about it. She was alive. But even then, I don't think she would tell us the whole story. Because she would like to keep some things to herself. Mm. Follow your heart. Use your brains. And may Allah open a lot of doors uh, for you to find what is uh, useful and productive which will enlighten us, inspire us, and do justice to this great, wonderful woman. Who was my grandma? Where did she come from? When was she born? These are things I don't know. And on this trip, it's the first time I'll actually get to, I hope, find answers to these really, really important questions. I'm going to go see a friend called Hannah. Hannah is half Indonesian, half French, but she was born and raised in the UK just like me. She's kind of the perfect person to talk to because she's lived here, she's lived in Britain. She, she understands the two cultures that I'm trying to navigate at the same time. And she's really cool, you'll love her. I mean, for me, why I think it's so important for you to know who you are and with you specifically going on this journey to find out who you are is because like sometimes subconsciously, things that I do or things that I say or the attitude that I kind of have, and it doesn't necessarily uh, strike a chord with specific people but then when I learn more about my culture or where I'm from 
and I, and I see like, oh snap, what I just did is a very Buddhist thing, or the way I am is a very Buddhist thing. And it, when you find your kind of, your peoples, especially when you're someone who's from so many places, I think that's a really beautiful thing. If anything, it's to give your own self some comfort in, in who you are and why you are a specific way or why you believe in a specific way or, or how you got to where you are now. How you got to where you are now. However cliche it sounds, you, it's true. You never know where you're going to be ahead if you don't know your history and you don't know your roots. I'm getting a train to Solo where my grandmother was born and I'm feeling a mixture of things, a range of emotions. One is extreme excitement, I can't wait. I've been dreaming of this for such a long time, but also I'm really scared. Scared because you know when you wanted to do something for so long, you just pray that it's everything you want it to be. Embrace this experience. It's gonna be emotional, it's gonna be tricky. You might come, you might discover things that you weren't expecting at all. I found you. <laughs> <laughs> this picture is one of few clues I have to my grandmother's origins. I was told that there's a meaning to the batik dress that she's wearing. I took the batik clue to the most famous batik village called Kauman in Solo. There I'd meet Kinan, a really good friend of mine, who luckily has connections to some of the most knowledgeable artisans in the country. The batik is useful because I've learned that traditionally batik was so much more than just fabric. Each unique batik pattern was an indicator of an individual's origins, village, class, family, and even age. Batik was like an individual's ID card. So my grandmother's picture and her batik could be a clue to learn more about her and her origins. Do we know what kind of kabaya that is? This one, right? Yeah, yeah. She said that it's middle, middle Java. The central Javanese, right? Yeah, central Javanese. This is pecinan. Pecinan? Pecinan, but... She said that your grandmother might be the upper class one because she's wearing like a pachinan. Pachinan is like a batik that from Chinese, like a mixture of Chinese and then Indonesia. Wow, so it's like a... So your grandmother might be the upper class one because not everyone could wear the anchim, yeah, yeah. the, the pachinan batik. The upper class, ah. they usually uh, take pictures like that. Like Damn, so I'm, I, I, I come from like upper class. Upper class yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indonesian rich uh, people. Damn, so my grandma was <laughs> a classy lady. So he said that your grandma's batik is like red. Similar like this. Similar like this, like uh, it has a bright color and a lot of flowers. With their help, we've been able to track down ones that look as similar as possible. This one that my grandma was wearing, this would be for me. It'd be, it means so much to me if I'm able to wear something of my grandma's in my future wedding or a day that means a lot to me, to have her represented or present in some sort of way, her history, her culture, her tradition. The batik confirmed that my grandmother was Central Javanese from Solo, but it also told me something I'd never known about her before that she had come from an upper-class, wealthy Indonesian family. And the reason this stuck with me is that it was so far removed from the humble and simple life I know she lived in Little Mombasa. Why did she come to Africa with nothing, when in Indonesia she had everything? Regardless, my grandmother had never mentioned any of this before, and what I'd learned is that she evidently didn't deem it important enough to. In turn, it taught me that she was a woman who prioritized the hope of her family's future over the grief of her past. It felt like this adventure had taken one step closer in finding her. We're at the Salat Ma'alis. Salat Solo, Salat Solo is like Japanese salad. It's basically brought from European colony. Mm. They brought it here. So it's a fusion between the colonial yes, food and... Yes. Colonialism, <laughs> my enemy. <laughs> but a living relative of my grandmother I had spent weeks trying to track down had suddenly called me back out of the blue. It was the first time we'd ever spoken. So we kind of stopped our meal, continued this conversation, which is crucial because she has all the clues of 
as to where I'm from, where my grandma was born, the area, and, and she's the oldest living relative. Thank God I was with Tunan, who was helping me translate. We asked her everything, names, locations, addresses, anything she could tell us. <laughs> I feel like my mind just exploded. You know when you feel like you know something and then you start from zero? Everything we thought we knew about my grandma, oh, it was wrong. So I thought my grandma was something solo, but she's actually from? Pari Gediri. And Pari Gediri. Jawa Timur. And I feel like a part of me has failed. It's failed. And I'm in the completely wrong place. And you'd think this information would be comforting. But actually, ironically, it's the complete opposite. I am embarrassed and hurt about actually how little I know about her history. I continue going on this journey thinking, do I want to know more? Or will I just feel worse about it? Finally, I have an address. Jalan Legend Sutoyo. But I don't have time. I have to get to Kidiri, no matter what it takes. Oh my God. But the road is long and the road is difficult. The closer I get, the more tense I feel. And the more I learn, the more disconnected I feel. I can't help but think, why would my grandma leave such a beautiful country like this? But I know this feeling. I grew up detached from my history and culture. I'm not from the west enough to be western. I'm not from the east enough to be eastern. I just keep swinging between everything and not oh really anything. I finally arrived. Legend Sutoyo, the street my grandmother was born and raised in. I was just taking it all in. The sounds. The smells. The people. One thing for sure is that everyone is looking at me. Daddy London. 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 <laughs> Trying to soak it in. Now I'm just maybe I'll I'll meet someone who knows something. I don't know. Going with the flow, guys. Yeah. Aku dari London. But but nenek aku. <laughs> no, but campuran. Oh yeah. But kamu berapa di sini? Berapa tahun di sini? Saya dari kecil. Ah, kamu tahu nenek aku? Siapa namanya? The kind old man showed me my grandmother's address, but it wasn't what I expected. He told me that the Dutch had torn down the house 50 years ago and built a school and a church. Were the Dutch the reason my grandmother left? Here it is. This is it. Ini sekolah berapa lama? 40 tahun ini sudah. Wow. Sejak berdiri gereja ini. Uh, you know, of course I would have loved to have seen something of my grandma's here. Some sort of like property or house to kind of see that where she would have grown up in. And unfortunately, I don't have that luxury, but of all the things that could have been built on top of somewhere where my grandma used to reside, a school is probably top of the list place where young people get educated and learn and I'm sure she would have totally agreed with that. I mean we're Muslims and it's a church but that doesn't bother me. It's just a beautiful place of spirituality and I'm glad that people are able to connect to something higher uh, somewhere where my grandmother once lived so if that isn't blessings I don't know what is. 
By the time I left the school, word had got round that this crazy foreigner was walking up and down Legend Satoyo Street, asking people if they knew his grandmother. But a nice man found me and invited me back to his house. What followed was impossible for me to capture. This man, Imam Kimbali, saw the pictures and immediately recognized my family. He revealed his family were my family's neighbors. From a young age, he had grown up with my grandmother's sister's daughter before she'd left. This is all so happening really fast. I can't like can't quite process it. It's just kind of blowing me away. Imam's family had kept some of the old things that were left behind by our family. Imam kept pointing at a rusty old bike hidden away in the corner and it looked familiar. Wait, 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 This could be the same bike that's in the picture. Hold on a sec. Munkin Samana. Is it Sama? Sama. No, really, Sama. Sama. Oh my god. So this is a picture of my my grandmother's brother. And this is the bike. It's the same bike. This guy left with my mother. One sibling remains. So what had happened, he must have left the bike with the remaining sibling. And this is the exact bike. This This is the bike. Then he got he got rusa. Okay, it's not it's not broken, so I asked him. I, I asked him if I could write there. I am riding my granddam calls bicycle. Holy shit. That was the coolest thing in my life ever. Ever, ever, ever. So I know some of you might be thinking, oh, it's just a bike, what's wrong with you, but it's not just a bike, it's, it's history. It's a tangible material thing that meant something to people, means something to us. And for that reason and that reason alone, it's, it's significant, it's beautiful. And it's so beautiful that this family had kept it. Imam had one more secret to reveal. Imam said he had the keys to another house that belonged to my family. A house I never knew existed. This house he took me to was opposite the church and school I was staring at earlier, where my grandmother's house used to be. It was just behind me the whole time. And I never realized. But it was locked. And it hadn't been opened in 50 years. Imam said that this house also belonged to our family, but they were waiting for a member of the family to return. So I'm feeling a bit like nervous, my hands kind of like shaking.
kamarnya. Wow, wow, wow. It's almost like a bit scary actually. It's like like remnants of what life would have been like and it's literally frozen from the time in which my grand auntie and my grandmother and all my relatives who lived here at that particular time would have lived. I mean it's completely abandoned but it's completely destroyed as well. Oh, Ada, there's the picture. Ada, like you? Nah. Oh my god. I will take, I will take, I will take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like pictures. Oh, cow, this is insane. Wow. You got pictures. <laughs> right? Yeah. Man, these are like. This is insane. This is like a treasure chest for me because. And it's just been like hiding here. Like, who is this? I don't even know. It just keeps on, the, the questions keep on coming. We continued rummaging through everything, not entirely sure what I was looking for, but I was also afraid to find something. Was this all just a waste of time? But just before I gave up hope. No. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my god, Adam, I found it, Adam. Holy cow. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it. There she was. Oh my god, I can't believe it. My Nene. You know, I don't think I <clears throat> important any of this was to me until um, I saw that picture. Oh, sh <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> what is wrong with me? Ah, oh. oh man, it's just, ah, oh. it's just uh, it's, it's been a really long journey and. Yeah, it's just it's a it's a beautiful thing, absolutely. But um, just learning what I learned, and 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 the picture proved to me that you know so much sacrifice has been made, and and, and so much has been given up, so I can enjoy uh, the life that I live. And uh, you know, I, I I don't know my grandma, but over this journey, I've got to know her more, and I can't I can't even tell her I thank you for for that sacrifice, but. Uh, I can, um, I can live my life in a way that, that shows it. Here, at the end of the journey, I remember a quote from a book I read. When you want something, all of the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. I've always wanted to know who I was but I live in a society that puts you at the center of your own universe. Nothing but you is more important. But this journey to learn more about my nene has taught me nothing is more untrue. The deeper I got inside the beauty of this land, the stories and kindness of its people, the origins of my family here, the more I began to lose my sense of self and reconnected with the universe that was beyond me a universe that taught me my identity is part of a bigger story than just myself. And at the end, I found some new kind of wholeness and belonging. I am of this land. It's part of who I am. But I've learned I'm also something new and different. Perhaps home and my identity is where I will have the confidence to build something new. But the universe pulled me back here to remind me that nothing can move forward without reconnecting myself with where it's all starting.
This whole journey, I thought I was chasing the back of my grandmother. But maybe, maybe she'd been watching my back this whole time. 